The apology video, a rite of passage for almost every influencer with a decent following. For people like you and me, public cancellation is usually nothing but a short-lived spectacle, but for an influencer, it's an occupational hazard with potentially disastrous results. Being caught up in public shaming or humiliation, warranted or not, has become a career milestone for those making their life a never-ending public extravaganza. So if you want to be a social media sensation, you have to prepare for it. This is how to apologize like an influencer. But before you apologize, you first have to find something scandalous to do. Maybe it's sharing videos of a deceased person on your livestream, or locking all your content behind a paywall and gaslighting fans who can't afford yet another subscription. A big thing to worry about here isn't committing a crime, or at least one that can be proven in court. Because you can't apologize from prison. It doesn't fit the aesthetic, I'm afraid. Once you have the right scandal and you're receiving backlash from all your haters because, of course, anyone who dares to criticize you must be a hater and has absolutely nothing of value to say. It's time to drop that banger apology video. To create this, you must first understand why it's so important. After all, so many Hollywood stars have done more heinous things and they've never felt the need to apologize. I'm looking at you, Mark Wahlberg and Mike Tyson. So why is it different for the influencer? As an influencer, your job is to share your life online. Whether you're producing makeup tutorials or gaming guides, your personality is at the core of what you're selling. You're creating a parasocial relationship with your audience. This isn't really something you can control, it's pretty much part of the job. No matter how many boundaries you set up, your truest fans will become personally attached to you, no matter the kind of content you make. Think about it, you're with them when they're eating dinner or folding laundry and they watch you when they feel lonely. Of course they're going to develop a parasocial relationship and think of you as their friend. This is the main difference between influencers and what we would consider to be more traditional stars. These are the people who have always been unreachable. You generally only see them when they're doing what they're famous for, whether starring in a movie or performing their hit song. With influencers, you see even the most mundane things they do, which makes the bond between creator and audience closer and deeper. But this relationship is bound to get messy because we're all humans, and humans are flawed. As an influencer though, you're placed on a pedestal because of the highlights of your life that you've decided to share. And so when you do something that contradicts the audience's perception of you, however big or small the offense, those people will ensure you are aware of it. And just like a real friendship, you must come forward to explain yourself. Why did you mock that corpse in your travel vlog? Did you knowingly sell contaminated lipstick, racist photos or homophobic tweets from your past, animal mistreatment, being rude at the drive through being caught using a slur? Angry mobs will prepare their hot takes and trolls will storm YouTube comments. Death threats ensue and doxing and harassment will follow you like a black cloud. Your biggest fans will try to defend you but only on one condition. Apologize. Before we talk about that, I want to take a moment to thank Incogni, the sponsor of today's episode. If there's anyone that needs to apologize to the entire internet, it's data brokers. These companies buy up all your data from all over the web and use it to create a profile of you, including all of your personal information like your phone number and home address. They then sell this profile to companies who are trying to sell you things, some of which might be scammers. If you're wondering how shady companies always seem to have all your correct info, it's these data brokers. The good news is that they're required by law to delete all the information they have about you once you ask. The bad news though is that because of how valuable this information is, they make it as difficult as possible for you by replying with objections and making you jump through hoops to get the result you want. Thankfully, with the help of the sponsor of today's video, Incogni, you can skip all those hoops and get your information deleted with zero effort. All you have to do is create an account with Incogni and grant them the right to work for you, and that's it. Incogni will reach out to all the data brokers on your behalf to request all your personal data be deleted and deal with any objections. It really is that easy. Take your personal data back with Incogni and use code APERTURE at the link below to get 60% off an annual plan. Back to our story. In this position, you must say something, and if you don't, the public will fill your silence with outrageous takes. So you do what you must. You decide to make your apology content. I call it content because essentially that's what it's become. A new niche with a style cultivated over the years to get the most favorable reaction. 
First, we have the classic Apple Notes app apology commonly found on Twitter or Instagram stories. An influencer will type and format their statement and then post it all over their social media. This is a great example of what not to do. It's a classic mistake, but the Notes app apology makes it seem like you're trying to get off easy. You'll issue your regrets and hope the news cycle moves along, forgetting that anything happened. It comes off as premeditated and lacking sincerity. Here's the problem with laying it out in black and white. Now your haters can dissect every single syllable to look for hidden meanings that they definitely can 100% claim means you regret nothing and your apology is fake. It's so easy for your words to be twisted and backfire. So often the notes app apology isn't enough. If you made the mistake of doing this, you'll soon be aware of the mistake and after a few days of being ripped to shreds, you'll realize it's time to bring out the big guns. An apology video. The aesthetics of your video are crucial. You don't want to flash your wealth or seem too put together. Find a blank wall like a beige or gray couch. The older and more beat up it looks, the better. If you only have expensive furniture, sitting on the floor is the best option. The framing of your video is everything. You want to seem as human and down to earth as possible. You need to wear very plain, inoffensive clothes like a billionaire who's trying to convince the world that they're frugal. Try going without makeup, maybe greasy hair, to show that you've been really struggling the past few days. The amount of work that goes into appearing genuine is super ironic, yet here you are on your floor about to hit record. With the red light blinking, start the video with a sigh, because a sigh indicates a release of pent up emotion. You're about to get something off your chest, maybe you don't know where to start and admit this. Whatever it takes to make you seem more relatable. You must make yourself seem worthy of respect and forgiveness. Most apologies come straight from the heart, but not you. You're an influencer, so everything has to be scripted. So here's exactly what you say and how you say it. You start by explaining how difficult the past few days or weeks have been. You must mention that you've been getting death threats, even if it was just one person that said, go to hell. Talk about how these threats and all the harassment have kept you up at night, questioning the safety of your friends and family. People don't have much regard for you right now, so bringing up the safety of your friends and family is important, so people feel empathy for you. Even better, they might pity you a little bit. Also, by bringing up the intensity of the hate you've been receiving, you subtly shift blame. You paint yourself as a victim, and you can even shed a tear to sell it. Yes, it's true that the amount of hate and death threats received online in circumstances like these is often uncalled for. It's also true that this public backlash can be extremely hurtful and detrimental to an influencer's mental health. But in the context of an apology, drawing too much attention to how you feel you've been treated doesn't work to make you look sorry. Anyway, you jump into your side of the story and depending on the situation, maybe you explain that it was all supposed to be a joke. Or you didn't exactly know how your product was being produced or the way it was filmed made the whole situation look worse. While all of this might be true, these nuggets of context somehow make you seem guiltier. They present subtle tactics to shift the blame and ignore the gravity of the situation. There's also the approach of being overly vague. You can make a short, sweet video acknowledging your role in the situation and ending it with a simple sorry. But that's not good enough either. How are the fans supposed to know you understood what you did wrong? It seems you don't care enough to go into specifics and truly immerse yourself in your own guilt. But if you go too deep into the details and create an hour long video, your apology is buried in your rambling and maybe you can use this as an opportunity to include ad breaks. After all, this will be probably your best performing 20 minutes of all time, so why not use it to make a little extra money? The end of the apology is always a promise to do better in the future. You understand you're accountable to your fans and that this behavior was unacceptable and that in the future nothing like this will ever happen again. You try to be as sincere as possible, that you've learned your lesson and have been adequately punished. Although you admit you don't deserve forgiveness, you hope your audience can trust you again and then and only then, you stop recording. No matter what you say or do, your efforts won't be taken well. If you want to apologize like an influencer, be prepared to face scrutiny. Because you are bound to fail, and I can't even point to an example of an influencer apology that was well received with little backlash. So what can we learn from influencers' mistakes? Suppose you ever need to apologize to an individual or even a community. In that case, being as straightforward as possible about your indiscretions is essential. Take full responsibility for your actions without shifting blame or drawing any attention to how you've been treated. Also, when possible, apologize in private instead of presenting everything to a global audience. 
The smaller the conversation, the more likely everyone will have their side heard. Also, don't engage with the angry internet mob. And as a fan, try not to add fuel to the fire. It's not productive and only serves to hurt people and distract from any real mistakes an influencer has made. Although hurtful words might buzz around online, participating in the discourse will only make things worse for yourself, whether you're a fan or influencer. Influencers can sometimes provoke their fans, thinking they're defending themselves. In times of heated arguments online, I'd say log off for your own good. Take time to gather your thoughts, try to avoid sites online that will hurt you or distract you from the facts of the situation, and most importantly, go outside, touch some grass. I wonder if there are any ways for influencers to become better at apologies. When I think of creative ways some influencers have approached apologies, they only come off as cringe-inducing and even more insincere. I just don't think the internet is an ideal forum to apologize, yet I also don't see any other way. Until somebody breaks the mold, the typical apology video will continue. In the end, I don't think influencers should be held to a different standard than you and me. Like everyone else, they deserve grace in times of distress and the opportunity to right their wrongs. And that's why, in my opinion, the best apology isn't about the aesthetics, the script, or whether or not you can play a ukulele. The best apology is always changed behavior. And perhaps a video proving it. Hey. If you like the videos we make and would want to support us to make bigger and better projects, we've recently just updated the Patreon. We have different tiers with perks like access to a private Discord server, a peek behind the curtains to hear from the team that makes these videos, discounts on all the merch we'll create in the future, and many more perks that will be decided by you guys, the patrons. If you don't have the means, then please don't feel obligated in any way. Subscribing and watching these videos is more than enough support. but. If you do have the means and want to support in some way, then this is the best way to do so. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching.